Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. This is Kathy. I am back today with a card using a digital stamp from Dyes Digis called Cupcake Treat. I printed the image out onto a piece of 80 pound Nina solar white cardstock and then just jumped right in with the coloring. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to do was make sure that I didn't lose the definition of the nose on the mouse. So I just drew real light lines on either side with E42 um, and then did tiny flicking motions above it just to kind of make his snout appear that it's sticking out forward more so than the rest of his face. And then I went in with E41 and colored in the rest of his body. Um, that's not something I normally do. I usually start with my darkest color. But with the E40s, um, they blend very well together and E41 tends to pick up the darker colors quite a bit. So that's why I decided to start with E41 and then go in with my mid-tone and dark tone to finish up the shading in the shadows. I tend to be pretty heavy-handed with my markers, especially the dark colors. So if I color an image in this order, starting with my lightest color first, when I go in and do the first round of shading, I usually will use my mid-tone just so my darkest color doesn't end up taking over. You can see like around his back, I have quite a bit of the E42 there. And had I jumped up to the E43, that little guy would have ended up being way too dark. So once I was done with the E42, this is when I bring in the E43 and I extend those colors out a little bit on his face that's being um, covered up by the cupcake. And then to get a really good separation between his chin and his arm, I went in and did a real thin line there with the E43. I was pretty mindful while I was doing this coloring with the E43 again because they're, they're in the same family they blend really well together, but the E41 will pick up quite a bit of the color, as I had previously mentioned. So I was trying to be careful so that I didn't have to try and blend out really harsh lines with E41 later on, because then I would just end up blending this poor guy to death. So here, after I had done the E43, I went back to E42 to soften up some of the lines and then blend more out with the E41. And I did spend a little bit more time blending than I normally would, but again, it was because I used the E40 family. And for his ear, I just used two shades of pink, and I'm still working on his little face, obviously. Um, like I said, I really, really kind of tried to pay attention to where I was shading, knowing that the E41 was going to pick up a lot of the color. And around his muzzle, I know I thought that it got a little bit too dark, which is why I kept going over it with the E41 to try and lighten it. And that is another thing with the E40 family is um, I'm kind of guilty of not allowing that ink to really settle into the cardstock. So I realized that I was about to overblend everything. So that's why I moved on to his little ear. And I just did that with two shades of pink and then realized I forgot to color in his tail. So I did that. And then I moved on to finish up his belly, which I did the whole, I pretty much colored the whole thing in with the E41. And then kind of had to let that settle in. And it, when it dried, it was a little bit too close to his body so I just did a quick swipe with my colorless blender over that to lighten it up a little bit and then I went back and worked on his ear a little bit more because the ink had some time to settle in and I wanted to have a little bit more shading so that it looked like his ear was a little bit more curled over the center where the pink is. Next I started working on the cupcake and I wanted the cupcake to be a chocolate cupcake and then I was going to do like a vanilla buttercream frosting. And when I started coloring in the cake part, um, I, I chose fairly light colors, again knowing that I'm heavy handed, but as I kept going, it wasn't really looking very chocolatey to me but I was not gonna give up and I just kinda kept going and kept working with it thinking that I could add darker colors if I need to. 
So I started out with a fairly light color and eventually worked my way up to the E57. And that gave me um, some really good shading underneath the frosting and behind the crinkles in the cupcake wrapper. And then I went back in with the E34 and started to fill in the cake. And every layer that I added, I kept thinking it's not looking very chocolatey. But I wasn't going to give up. I was just going to keep going with it and keep working um, to see if I could make it make it work and, and get it to a point where I was happy with it. And another thing that I also was really concentrating on was I wanted to keep somewhat of a highlight so that the cupcake kept more of a round shape and it didn't end up looking very flat. And by the time I was done adding all the color into the cupcake, I was pretty happy with it. I didn't think that it looked very chocolatey, but I was happy that I was able to keep that round shape and still get shading behind the cupcake wrapper and as well as underneath the frosting. After I was done with the cupcake, I started working on the kitty. And for the kitty, I wanted to have a lot of texture on his fur. And I picked up on this technique watching a video from Stamping Bella. And I am literally going in and sort of mapping out where the darkest shadows would be with an E35. And I'm literally just doing a bunch of scribbles. And I'm being very conscious not to fill all of it in and leave a whole bunch of white space there. When I come in with the E33, I'm still doing the scribbly motion and I'm filling in some of the white space near and around the E35, but I'm still leaving quite a, quite a bit of white space. So that when I come in with my lightest color, which is E31, that's when I fill in pretty much all of the leftover white space, still doing a scribbly motion, because I was afraid that if I started to do a flicking motion that I would just blend everything together and then I would lose all my texture. I did leave kind of like a white line between his arm and his face so that when I come in with the darkest color that I would have some definite separation between his arm and his face. For my darkest color, I bring in E57 and I use a very, very light hand with it because I know myself and I mentioned before that I'm heavy handed. So I'm still doing the scribbly motion, but just adding tiny little scribbly marks where it would be the darkest, where the cupcake is kind of covering his face and then to get the separation between his face and his arm and a shadow would be cast on his foot underneath his belly there and then um, kind of at the base of his tail a little bit. And then of course around that, the part of his ear there so that it would look more rounded for when I color in the center of his ear with the pinks. After I had the darkest color put down, I did come back in and I worked my way back down through the colors that I had used, so E35, and just kind of scribble out some of those lines just to soften, up, soften them up a tiny little bit. And then I go in with the E35 again. Nope, I just finished the E35. Come in with the E33 again and continue adding more scribbling. And <clears throat> with this technique, it looks really weird as you are doing it, but as you keep going and you keep adding more and more layers, and as long as you keep with the scribbling, you keep the texture, um, but it's, it's blended so it doesn't look very splotchy. You know, it doesn't it just looks fuzzy and it looks cute. But you definitely have to keep going with it, keep working with it, not just give up because it, it does look so weird at first. Once I was done with the kitty's fur, I went in and colored his belly and I wanted his belly to be lighter than the rest of his body. So I used E51 and E50 for that. And then I went in and colored his ear, the inside of his ear with R20 and R00. And I was really happy with how he turned out. I thought that the I was able to keep the texture and I thought that he looked pretty fuzzy. And then I noticed that he pretty much matched the color of my cupcake. So I decided to go in with some darker browns and change the color of my cupcake so that it was a dark chocolate cupcake. Um, so I'm really, you know, 
I wasn't too sure about the color of the cupcake and thought that if I needed to fix it later on down the road, I could fix it. And um, it's not that it needed to be fixed, it just needed to not match my cat. So I went in and I did that really quick and again, was trying to keep somewhat of a highlight to keep the roundness of the cupcake and played with that a little bit. And then I started to color in the frosting. And I was hoping for a nice vanilla buttercream frosting for my now dark chocolate cupcake. And the colors I chose didn't quite turn out to be very buttercreamy, but more of a salted caramel color, I suppose. So my chocolate cupcake ended up being a dark chocolate cupcake and my vanilla buttercream frosting, I'm going to call it salted caramel buttercream frosting. Still, I'm happy with the way that it turned out. I just started with my darkest color and added in where the shading would be, leaving a white highlight there in the center, um, both on the upper layer of frosting as well as the lower layer of frosting, and tried to leave a, a line of a white highlight on the lower layer there, and was quite pleased that I was actually able to maintain that highlight there. Um, that is one thing that I wanted to really kind of practice. I had seen some videos on it, um, particularly by Kelly Latavola. She goes into great detail on how to achieve that white highlight. If you haven't watched her videos, I would I highly recommend them. She's, she's really very fun to watch. And she always has really great tips and tricks when it comes to coloring with Copics. So I keep working on the frosting and adding a little bit more shading here and there, and that I think is how it ended up being a salted caramel buttercream rather than a vanilla buttercream. Once I was done with that, I work on coloring in the cherry. I really didn't do very much. I didn't do anything super special on the cherry. <clears throat> I just used my usual three colors of R29, R27, and R24. Of course, I wanted the darkest color where it was kind of pushed into the frosting itself. And for the cherry stem, I just used two colors and I probably could have gotten away with just using one because it was such a small area. Once I was done coloring the cherry, I moved on to the cupcake wrapper and I started with my darkest color. And the artist made it really easy to know where the darkest color should be by drawing in little lines, little hash marks in between the folds of the wrapper. Usually when I color in items that are folded like a cupcake wrapper or fabric folds on a skirt or a dress, I typically will start with my mid-tone rather than my darkest tone, but since the artist had put those lines in there, I was confident in starting with the darkest color. One thing that I like to do when I am doing pleats is have a darkest color, two mid-tones, and then my lightest color. And the reason for that is so that I can keep um, some white space and not lose the, the folds while I'm filling in. After I was done with the darkest, this is my first mid-tone, and I'm kind of extending the darker color out a little bit, um, and I'm extending it a little bit more on one side than the other, but I'm still leaving quite a bit of white space. And for that one there, I just extended that all the way down. And I didn't add the darkest color right there under that bow because it's in the front. So that would be where it, the most light would be hitting that particular area of the cupcake wrapper. Next, I come in with my second mid-tone and I just kind of extend those lines out a little bit more, but I'm still leaving that white space. When I come in with my lightest color, that's when I fill in the rest of the white space. And for this particular cupcake wrapper, I do end up going over it twice just to reintroduce some of the darker shading because it did get lightened up a bit when I went over it with my lighter color. And for the second go over with the colors, I sped it up really fast so we could just zip right through that and move on to coloring the ribbon around the cupcake wrapper. For the ribbon, I chose to color it in red because 
using teal and red together that's one of my very favorite color combinations anyway while I was coloring this I noticed that ink started to pool on the tip of my marker and that is why I removed the other cap to equalize the pressure within the barrel so that I didn't end up with a nice big red blob all over my cupcake wrapper that I just finished coloring. For the ribbon, I started with R59 and just added color where it would be the darkest, like at the very edges of the ribbon and then underneath the, the bow part of the ribbon. I made sure to be really generous with white space on the ribbon so that I could get some really good highlights in there. And after I had finished with the R27 and moved on to the R24, I realized that I was probably gonna have to come in with R89 just to add a little bit more depth at the very edges of the bow and underneath where the bow is tied. Once I was done adding in the R89, I finished up the bow with the rest of the reds and did a quick swipe with R24 just to blend it all out a little bit. And then the last thing I had to do was add a ground so it didn't look like those two cuties were just floating in the air. For the ground, I used a series of cool gray markers and just kind of scribbled around the bottom adding a shadow underneath their feet where they would be casting a shadow on the ground. Move down to C3 and C1 and then just blended all of it out with my colorless blender. And the final step was putting the card together. I cut the image out using a circle wafer die and mounted that onto a scallop circle that I had cut from red cardstock. I stamped the sentiment using VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I just, I trimmed them down with my paper trimmer, the white piece and the red piece, and then I just used my scissors just to cut that angle, added a bunch of foam tape, and slapped all of it on the front of a card, and that finishes it up for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would, and we'll see you next time.